Hey, this is Kyle with Aviant Works. Today I'm going to show you how to do level streaming in UDK using the Kismet system that is integrated with UDK. Um, so to start things off, I'm going to tell you that we have a level streaming example folder. That's where basically I'm going to keep all of the levels for this example. Now, um, we're going to end up having three levels. Um, one called the persistent level, level stage A, and level stage B. But what that's going to give you basically is two levels um, in reality for the player. So we just opened up UDK, the editor, and we're going to first need to start off by making our persistent level. Now what the persistent level is, is of course the persistent level. It's always going to be there, and it's basically going to keep the structure of the rest of the levels intact and going. So, um, what the persistent level is, just going to be this block. That's all. Um, as long as there's something there to be the persistent level, you will have a persistent level. So that's it. Just save that and call it persistent level or whatever it is that you want. doesn't really matter and save. I called it persistent, but whatever. We're going to open up a new and we're going to make a 1024 by 1024 by 32. And we're going to hit the add. And now we have that. And so we're going to make a light. And then I have made um, a material that I'm going to be using just to distinguish um, which is what. So we're going to do that. We're going to add that on there. Um, usually what this is going to be used for, by the way, would be, let's say you made a room um, prior to all this. And then you made another room and you wanted to connect the two. But when you walk in that first room, you, it's going to be there. And then once you walk into that second room and hit a certain point, it'll basically dump that previous room and so make it faster and give you um, better performance, you know, overall. So we have this, by the way. This is gonna, we're gonna pretend this is room A. And so we're gonna now save this. We're gonna call it level stage A and save it. Make a new, make another 1024 by 1024 by 32, a light. And we're now going to change my material to dirt material. All right, so now we have that. And we're going to save it. Level stage B. All right, so now we have all of our levels. Now we just have to connect, the, to connect them all. So we're going to open up our persistent level. And here's this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this off to the side. That way we can give some room for um, our level A to enter in. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the content browser. I'm going to get rid of this really quick. All assets. All right. Um, we're going to go up to this top bar right here. And we're going to want to click levels. And now as you see, our current level is the persistent level. Now we have the save level button. We have the kismet button and the visible button. Toggle visible, sorry. There you go. Toggle on, toggle off, and so on. And current level, so that means we have that level selected. So what we're going to want to do is go up to level, add existing level, and we're going to want to add level stage A. Now, we have a streaming method bo box that comes up that asks you, do you want it always loaded? Do you want it um, to be activated through a distance or use Kismet sequences? I want to choose Kismet sequences because that's what I love to do. So we're going to hit OK. Now currently we have that. And we can click that. And now currently technically we're working with that level. Um, the level stage A, level stage B, and so, or sorry, persistent level. And we have the lock. That way if you wanted to make any changes, you can lock the level and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to click level stage A. We're going to pick its geometry. We're going to move that over. And we're also going to move that light over. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we want to add in another existing level, and that's going to be level stage B. We're going to be using Kismet, and we have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these just down there, and then we're going to be updating our geometry. So we have that, and we're going to update. Update everything all in all. Um, and then after all this is done, what we're going to be doing is la adding in a player start. Um, and that's basically where the player is going to start, of course. <laughs> if 
very self-explanatory. So we're going to go to Add Actor. We're going to go to Player Start. And we're going to move this in a bit. That way we don't fall off the map, first off. Second, we're going to hit the space bar and we're going to rotate it. That way we're looking at the level B um, from the level A. And keep in mind our persistent level's right there. Just can't see it. It's off in the darkness. All right, so... Oh, by the way, when I made this player start, make sure that you have the persistent level selected. The reason why you're going to want this to have this selected is since this is the first thing that's loaded, you're going to want that that um, spawn point right there. Because since that's loaded, you're going to want to spawn with that. And this spawn point becomes part of the persistent level, so it's always going to be there as well. And if you don't do that, you will have problems. <laughs> So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in the Kismet Sequence. So with the Persistent Level currently selected, we're going to open up the Kismet Sequences. And now under, over here we have um, the sequences for all the levels, Persistent Level, Stage A, Level, Stage B. Double click on the Persistent, we're going to add Event, and then we're going to do Level Loaded. There's no changes you need to do with that, just leave it the way it is. Now we're going to right click and go to New Action, Level, Stream Levels. Now what this is basically going to do is it's going to have levels loaded on here and it's going to be waiting for an action whether you want to load it when it's visible or you want to unload it when it's visible or when it's finished loading what do you want it to do so what we're going to want to do is open up sequence act underscore multi-level streaming on under the levels topic we're going to want to hit add a new item and open up all those subtopics and now we're, we want the level name Naturally, since the spawn point's on level stage A, we're going to want to do that. So type level stage A. And you're going to want to hit enter. And as you see, the check the X had changed to a check mark. And so indicating, hey, it worked. So we have that. And once the level is loaded and visible for the persistent level, it's going to load up um, part B. Or, sorry, part A. The second area. So now we're going to try this out. Uh, first, got to build my paths. I haven't done that yet. We're gonna spawn. Work. So now we're here, but wait, where is B? Why is it here? That is a problem. We're, so we're gonna need to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the content browser. We're going to go to level stage A, make it your current level. And what we're going to want to do is um, add actor. And we're going to add in a trigger. Open its properties and make the radius, not the height, the radius, 512. And that should basically, um, it's going to fill it up um, as much as necessary. Um, of course, we can make a volume, but I'd rather not. So now we have that. So we're going to open up the Kismet sequences again. There's that. And here's level sequence A. So now that that's part of level sequence A, we can now add it to its sequences. So we're going to add a new event using trigger zero, and it's going to be touch. So now here's this. So basically now, once this is touched, we want to do a set of actions. So we're going to right click, go to new action, and we're going to stream levels. And now you can once again guess what's going to happen next. Open this and type in level stage B. Check mark. And once this is touched, we're going to want it to load up level stage B. So, now let's see if it works. We have that. And once we step on that, bam, it loads it up. So now we have that. But now I want to be able to get rid of that. So how would I do such a thing? Well, what you're going to want to do is, first off, go into the content browser, levels, double click on that, make it your current level. Close that out. Um, we're going to make another trigger and we're going to give it a radius of actually 256 just because you have to step there. <laughs> All right, so right basically now I made this trigger. So once you step there, we're going to set it so that it'll delete that over there. Open up Kismet. Um, we still have all of our level sequences, but now we have level stage B. So we're going to, ah, oh, we got to go click on, on that again. <sighs> Trigger, Kismet, Stage B, New Event using Trigger 1, Touch, we're going to want that, New Action, Level, Stream Levels, and now what we're going to do is, go to make that, and make the level name, Level Stage 1, or le sorry, Level Stage A, it'll work. 
But now once this is touched, we're going to want to unload that. And so getting rid of it. All right, so now we have our whole slew of sequences that we're gonna play. We're gonna go bam, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna walk over here, and it dumps it. And so that's how that works. So um, with doing all that, that's gonna save you a lot of system performance. It's gonna, it's gonna make it work out. Um, now keep in mind though, everything that would, if you were to dump system A, for, or level A for example, it dumps everything, all the lights, all the geometry, all the static meshes, even all the sequences, all of that's going to be dumped. The only thing that stays there is going to be the persistent level. But seeing as though this would break, um, and if you wanted a new spawn point, you'd have to set that up in a different Kismet sequence um, to basically dump that as well later on. Now, um, like a problem I was having is we had an elevator and um, it'd go down. Once you got down through the elevator, it would basically dump all of that. It would get rid of that elevator mesh that moved me down. And so it looked like there was no elevator there. Um, basically, all you got to do is add a, basically add in that elevator mesh. And then what you'd want to do is you would want to change its visibility. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to make another video for that later on. Um, thanks for watching and... I'd like for you to subscribe and, you know, watch more of my videos. Um, that visibility thing will be coming soon. Thanks for watching.